Good morning, everybody. How are you all? Today, we are going to talk about frequency histogram. So I will share my computer screen with you. Use the following data set to create a frequency histogram with 10 to 19 as the first interval. So the first thing we will do is to enter the data in L1 of TI-84. So the first thing we have to do is to clear the memories of the calculator. Press the second button on the top left corner, then plus sign on top of enter, then number four, and you will get clear all list on your calculator screen, then press enter, done. That means the memory of the calculator, the memories of the calculator have been cleared. Now press the stat button, which is in the second row, and then number one, which is edit. Here we will enter the data in L1. The cursor, the black rectangle, should be sitting on the first line in L1, where we'll start entering the data. So enter 22, then 35, then 15, then 26, then 40, then 28, then 18, then 20, then 25, then 34, then 39, then 42, then 24, then 22, then 19, then 27, then 22, then 34, then 40, then 20, then 38, and then 28. So total we have 22 data points, okay? And that's why your the cursor is now sitting on L1, 23. List L1, row 23, the cursor is sitting because we have 22 data points. So the first thing we will do is to arrange this data set in L1 in ascending order, that is from the lowest to the highest. How do I do that? Well, press the stat button, which is in the second row, and then number two, which is sort A. A stands for ascending order, means from lowest to the highest. So press number two. So on your calculator screen, you have sort A. A stands for ascending. Inside the parenthesis, you are going to type in L1. How are you going to do that? Press the second button on the top left corner, then number one. And you get L1 on your calculator screen. Then press the right cursor, right bracket or right uh, parenthesis button. Okay. So sort A, left parenthesis, L1, then right parenthesis, and then hit enter. It says done. Now the numbers in L1 have been arranged from the lowest to the highest. Let's check it out. Press the stat button and then number one. And you will see the lowest is now 15. Okay, 15 is the lowest number. Then 18, then 19. Now they have suggested to us use the first interval as 10 to 15. So that is, they're talking about class interval. Class interval. And we have to count the frequency in each class interval. So frequency. Okay. So frequency. Okay, so the first class interval is between 10 to 19. Okay, so what are the numbers between 10 to 19 in the calculator? It's 15, 18, 19 in L1. So under frequency, the count is three. What about the next class? The first is between 10 and 19. The next one will start from 20 and go up to 29. Notice the class width. Class width in this class is not 19 minus 10. Class width is equal to 20, which is the lower class limit of the second class, minus the lower class limit of the first class, which is 10, is equal to 10. 
Okay, so the class width is 10. Okay, so now let's calculate or count the numbers between 20 and 19, 29, 20 and 29 in the list L1 in the calculator. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 11. Okay, so this frequency count between 20 and 19 is 11. Okay. Next one, 20 plus 10 will be from 30 to 39. How many numbers are between 30 and 39 in L1? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 numbers. Okay. So the frequency count is 5. And the next class interval will be between 40 and 49, okay? Is, uh, let's look up in L1 in the calculator. Uh, 40, there is one, two, three, there are only three. So now if I add up all the frequencies, it is written as this, sum of frequency. And this is Greek sigma means capital S, capital S, capital S in Greek. Okay, and it means, sigma means summation, means sum. Okay, so you add up the frequencies, which is a sample size, N is your sample size, the sum of the frequencies, sample size, and that is equal to 3 plus 11 is 14, plus 5, 19, plus 3 is 22. So 22 is the total sample size. You can check on that by counting on the red numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So this table I have made, this table is called, table is known as frequency distribution. From this, I'm going to make the histogram. Now histogram vertical axis is frequency, and horizontal axis is groups or classes. So, let me create some space for myself. I'll move this up. I'll work with this data. Okay. And maybe I should uh, change the color of my pen to, let's see, which one looks good. Maybe we can select a purple one, okay, and then cross it out. Okay, so I'm going to make a histogram, frequency histogram. So on the vertical axis, I have frequency. And the horizontal axis, frequency is measured in this vertical axis. And the horizontal axis, we are measuring the classes. So there are only four classes, 10 through 19, and then 29, and then 39, and actually it should be uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, and you might call this 50. So between 10 and 19 frequencies, three, and then the lowest frequency is three, and the highest frequency is uh, 11. So zero, five, 10, 15, on the scale on the frequency, horizontal, on the vertical axis. So between 10 and 20, there are three. So height of this 
rectangle is 3. Then between 20 and 29, okay, there are 11. Horizontal. The height of this bar is 11. And then between 30 and 39, it is 5. Five. Okay. And then so the height of this bar frequency rectangle is five. And then between forty and fifty it is three only. So same height as the first class. Okay. <clears throat> now you are wondering the classes are between 10 and 19, 20 and 29. However, here I've drawn the first class is from 10 to 20. Okay. So we can make other. So this, uh, this is called, a, so let's make a better one in which the class intervals will be between 10.5 and 19.5. So let's do it that way. In that way, there will be no gap between the end of the first class, which is 19, and the beginning of the second class, which is 20. So for that, I have to move a little bit up. Back here. And then I make another frequency distribution table, class interval. So let me change the color, actually. That will be better so that there is no confusion. Let me change the color back to blue. All right. So this is class interval and corresponding frequency. Only thing I'm going to change is I'll make sure there is no gap between the end of one class and the beginning of the next class. And how do I ensure that? I'll make it from 10.5 to 19.5. And the frequency in that class is three. The next one is from 19.5 to 29.5. Frequency in that class is we already know is 11. And next one is from 29.5 to 39.5. Frequency in that class is 5 and then 39.5 to 49.5. This is 49.5. And that is frequency is 3. That frequency is 3. So total is 3, 14, 19, 22. Okay, so now we will make a better frequency distribution tape, a frequency histogram. So let me move a little bit again. So now we will not see any gap in the horizontal axis, as you will see. So let me change the color back purple. And let's get rid of this. So now I'm doing the, at, this is the frequency histogram with no gaps between the classes. Frequency histogram. Okay. So again, oops, not a good one. So, Better one. Okay, so now the first class is from ten point five to 
19.5. Next class is from 19.5 to 29.5. Next class is from 29.5 to 39.5 and 39.5 to 49. And so, so this is the frequency histogram. So frequency goes from 0, 5, 10, and say 50. Although my highest is 11 frequency. So the first class frequency is 3. The height of this rectangle is 3. Next class is frequency is 11. That is the highest frequency. This is 11. Next one is 5. Uh, I have to make sure I'm doing the correct correctly. So this is a lot of a, This is only 3, right? <coughs> so going back. So 3, this is 10.5 over here. The three will be something like this. Three, height of this, then 11. Then the next one is five, which is something like this. This is five, and next one again is three. Okay, so frequency on the vertical axis Basically, the shape of the diagram is same as the one on the top. Only difference is now there is no gap between the uh, upper interval of one class or upper boundary of one class, 19.5 of the upper boundary of the first class and the starting boundary or the lower boundary of the second class, which is 19.5 also. So there is no gap. So these are the classes or groups of data. So this is a frequency histogram. So the same data, only thing I've changed are the boundaries uh, by adding a decimal point so that the bound, upper boundary of one class is the same as the lower boundary of the next class. Notice in this type of diagram, uh, the bars are touching each other. The rectangular bars, they have same class width but the heights of the bars are different because the heights correspond to frequency and the adjacent bars touch each other. That's why it is called a frequency histogram. Okay, I will stop here today. If you have any question, comment, please write me a note. I'll get back to you soon. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And I will see you next time with another problem, another solution. If you like this video, please let your friends know about it. And please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button at the bottom right corner. Let your friends also subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button at the bottom right corner. Take care. See you next time. Another problem, another solution. Have a nice day.